question. Mr. Michaels, thank you so much as always for your invaluable teaching and service. I have a question about how to pray. Regardless of, of that we walk on the spiritual path, sometimes we are bound to have a desire or need for certain things, so we pray for this. But some people say that if you pray to fill your needs, it actually sends a signal of deficiency, so your prayers will never be answered, and only the situation of deficiency will return like a mirror. Some people say that guardian spirits or angels who hear prayers are intellectual beings, so we should tell them what we need specifically and clearly. And other people say that after clearly visualizing the desired situation in detail, you must forget it and stop paying attention. I'm confused as to, as to which story is correct. In the midst of confusion, neither praying nor not praying. I am in a state of confusion and suffering in pain. How should we pray? Well, that is a big topic in the sense that we first have to um, realize the fact that as spiritual people who are walking the spiritual path, we have been affected by some religion or other as we grew up. It's almost impossible to grow uh, up on earth. Even if we grow up among scientific materialists, we have certainly heard about some kind of religion. So when you look at it, uh, you look at that the vast majority of religions or religious people on this planet, they have this image of the wish-fulfilling God. It's the remote being up there in the sky who if you pray, or if you light candles, or if you spin a prayer wheel, or if you uh, give food sacrifices or whatever uh, people have come up with, then God is going to grant you a favor. It's sort of a trying to make a deal uh, with God. It, it's based on this assumption that God needs something from human beings, whether it's prayers or attention or food or incense or whatever. And if you give God what God needs, God will give you what you need. And so I think the first thing we need to do as spiritual people is to uh, take a look at this and realize that at the beginning stages of the path, we might still have this image of the wish fulfilling God, but if we really want to get to a point where we can manifest what we desire, uh, then we have to let go of it. We have to let go of the wish fulfilling God. You know, the, the, um, the universe is not a, um, it, it's not run by gods or angels that are looking to fulfill our desires uh, because this is a passive approach. And it's an approach that has been promoted by both scientific materialism and religion that we are passive beings. We are exposed to either this God up there in the sky or natural laws, but uh, there's not much we can do to change the workings of the universe. And as I've explained in many of my videos, this is uh, simply not correct. It's, it's a lie. And if you take my video on how the world was created, you will see that we are actually designed to be co-creators. Co-creators not recipients, not passive, not at the mercy of some force outside ourselves. We are designed to be co-creators. And what does it mean to be a co-creator? Well, it means, uh, of course, many different things, but in terms of getting what you want, let's say you have a concrete physical need here on Earth. You need a job. You need money. Uh, you want to have a house to live in, or at least a place to live, or whatever it may be. So you can take the traditional religious approach that you either pray to God or you light candles or incense or whatever, uh, hoping that the wish fulfilling God is going to show up and give you what you want. Uh, or you can go through a process of retooling your mind so you realize that it's actually up to you to co-create what you want. But the universe will gladly give you what you co-create within certain boundaries. So I know this is uh, not a simple answer to the question because the person is suffering is in pain and most of the time when we are suffering and in pain, we're looking for an easy way out, an easy fix to get out of the pain. 
But you can actually shift your mind to get out of the pain, out of the suffering by realizing that you do live in a universe that is designed to help you manifest what you want to manifest. But the question to ask yourself, what is it really you want to manifest in life? And that's where m many people get into um, disappointment when they have a concrete physical need they want fulfilled and it isn't manifesting. They pray about it, it isn't manifesting, or they do uh, treasure maps or uh, positive affirmations or whatever, and it doesn't manifest. But the reason why it doesn't manifest is that you haven't shifted your consciousness. I actually talk more about this in another video about the law of attraction and why that doesn't work for many people. Uh, but the main thing here is this. You are not passively praying for a God to do something for you. You shift your mind so you realize you are an active being. You're not a victim. You are a co-creator. And you can manifest what you want to manifest, and the universe will help you manifest it when you learn how to work with the universe. So, that means a couple of things. It's, it's true, as the question says, that if you are praying from a state of lack, a state of frustration, then you are most likely to have that mirrored back to you from the universe. I've talked in several videos about how the universe is a reality simulator or it works like the cosmic mirror. I've given this example that if you are seeing a man who's sitting in front of an actual physical mirror and he looks frustrated and you ask him why he's frustrated and he says, well, I want the mirror image to smile at me, but it won't do it. Obviously, you are realizing he's going about it the wrong way. If he wants his own mirror image to smile, at him, he has to smile at the mirror first. So that is uh, a correct principle, that before you can manifest anything, you have to shift your consciousness so you're into a state of consciousness where you can manifest something. And it's true that if you see yourself as a victim of circumstances beyond your control, you're at the mercy of some wish-fulfilling God who is arbitrary and you never know whether he's going to fulfill your wishes or not, then you are actually projecting out that that's what you want to experience. The concept of a reality simulator is that the reality simulator will give us back physical circumstances that correspond to what we are projecting out. What we are projecting into the simulator will be mirrored back to us. The problem that most people have with that concept is they don't realize that we are not just projecting with our conscious minds, we are projecting with our subconscious minds as well. So you may, at the conscious level, be projecting that you want this, but if you're coming from this state of lack, if you're coming from this sense that you're living in a hostile universe that doesn't want to give you what you need, then you are actually projecting that the experience you want to have in life is the experience of lack, of not having what you want. And then the cosmic mirror can only reflect that back to you. So that's why it's important to start shifting your consciousness to realize you are a co-creator. And being a co-creator means a couple of things. Uh, it, it does mean that you realize that you, you need to shift your consciousness so you're not coming from a deficit. You're not coming from a sense of lack. Uh, you have to shift where you realize that you, you first start at the identity level and you accept that you are a being who deserves to have a good material standard of living. And it is possible for you to have it. You then take this down to the mental level where you need to be practical. How could you, given who you are, given the society you live in, how could you manifest, for example, a good standard of living? And that might require you to be practical about what kind of jobs are available. Could you start a business? Can you get an education? What practical steps can you take? Because 
what I see a lot of spiritual people do is that they get into this. Uh, it's it's again a kind of like a new age version of the wish fulfilling God. That if I just focus on the positive, if I do this treasure map of visualizing the house I want to live in or the car I want to drive, then it'll it's magically going to drop in my lap. But it isn't. You have to take practical steps to make it a reality. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not doing your part of the bargain. You are, you are, you could say. You know, the, the question says that the, uh, the angels uh, who hear prayers uh, are intellectual beings. I would more say they're intelligent beings. And they won't give us what we pray for if it actually hinders our growth. And what, it, what does our growth mean? It means we shift our awareness so we realize we're co-creators. So if you are uh, praying for this from this state of mind of being passive, then if the angels were to answer your prayers, it would validate that you are a passive being, but you can get some kind of miracle from above. What they really want you to do is to shift your consciousness so you are working with them to manifest what you want. And that means, among other things, taking the practical measures, but it also means accepting that you can have this. You are the kind of being who can have this. You deserve it. And then you need to look at the emotional body where many people have uh, from past lives. You know, we have, we have developed this feeling that we are not worthy to have our wishes fulfilled or to have good material conditions. You look back, you know, uh, all of us who are spiritual people are open to reincarnation. So look back. Where have you embodied in past lifetimes? You know, you may very well have been embodied in great poverty, and you may have lived a whole life in poverty, and you may have created what I call these subconscious selves that are based on this feeling that you are not worthy to have riches or to have a good life. You you can only be, uh, you're only worthy to have a live as a poor person and not have a good material standard of living, and that's something you need to then look at in your. Uh, subconscious mind and, and flush out these subconscious selves as I talk about in several videos how to do this and um, overcome this you know and and then of course uh, that's the identity mental the emotional but then at the physical level as I said you need to take action and do something what can you do to have your prayers fulfilled and um, what helped me a lot in, in this uh, thing was that I realized that the universe really is a, it's an educational institution. And it's here to um, teach me how to be a co-creator, how to manifest things uh, based on my own powers of the mind, not some wish-fulfilling God that gives it to me. And I don't know if you see the shift I'm, I'm trying to convey here. It's like that... Uh, when you are praying from a passive state of mind, you are thinking. You may not be thinking this consciously, but subconsciously you have this image. You are either not capable or you're not worthy. You don't have the power or you don't deserve to have certain something. But perhaps there is this wish-fulfilling God up there who will give it to you anyway, who will manifest some kind of miracle and give it to you. But you see, the universe is an educational institution, and what you need to learn is that your physical circumstances will always reflect your state of consciousness because consciousness comes before the physical manifestation. I, I say that in a number of my videos. You know, that the entire material world we live in was co created by the ascended masters. And it started manifesting a certain image at the identity level, then made it more concrete in the physical, gave it direction in the emotional, and then they simply brought the energies, the spiritual energies, down to the physical frequency spectrum and started manifesting the universe. So it starts in consciousness, and that's what we are meant to learn as spiritual people, that whatever we desire to have in the physical, it must start in consciousness. So we must start by changing our consciousness. And uh, that's why, personally, I mean, when I was a child, of course I prayed to God to uh, 
you know, I, I never really prayed to get particular things, but I prayed to, uh, for world conditions, obviously, uh, often. I would have this long prayer I would give every night before I fell asleep about changing things. There wouldn't be war, or war would be removed from the earth, or all these kind of things. Uh, and it, at one point it became obsessive compulsive. It took me an hour to get through this, and I realized it was just too much. So, so I understand it. I'm not trying to put anybody down for praying, but I'm just saying that when you walk the spiritual path, there comes this point where you just have to let it, let that idea go. It doesn't mean that I'm not asking for help. You know, I'm not. It doesn't mean that I'm not praying. But what I've done for many, many years is, especially since I've heard about ascended masters, is that I'm asking the ascended masters to help me see. First of all, what I need to change in my own state of mind. And then what I need to do to manifest something. And um, when I say what I need to change in my own state of mind, let's say you want to manifest something physical, better place to live. I would ask the Ascended Masters, whoever master you feel close to, help me see what I need to change in my mind so I can manifest this, so I can attract this to me. And um, then you can, you can ask for help to see what separate cells you have that are working against it. So, uh, you see what I'm saying? In order to manifest something, you have to send a unified message into the cosmic mirror. And what happens to most people is that they have they feel a need at the conscious level. They get obsessive compulsive about it. I have to have this now. But they're not realizing that they're sending a different message, often an opposing message with a subconscious mind at the emotional, mental, and identity level. Namely, I'm not worthy, I shouldn't have this, blah, blah, blah. Whatever it may be, you have these separate selves. So you have to overcome the division. You know, as Jesus said, you are house divided against yourself. And so that you are sending a unified message into the cosmic mirror. And when you do that, then things will begin to manifest for you. Uh, but they may not happen instantly. And there are sometimes we also need to recognize that as we walk the spiritual path, we are attaining more and more connection with our higher selves and with what I call the one mind or the Christ mind. And the Christ mind looks at what is good for the whole, what raises the whole. So there can certainly be, uh, you can see many people in the world who are praying for a specific thing. Uh, but it would conflict with what other people's free will is or what is practical in their society or what is lawful in their society. You can even see people who are in conflict with other people and they are praying uh, that they will get some advantage over the other person, but the other person may also be praying to the wish-fulfilling God. So they are praying for opposite things. And obviously, that's not in accordance with the one mind that seeks to raise all life. So you have to, when you, when you become a spiritual person and you gain this connection, you, you have to be willing to look at consciously, you know, uh, is what I'm praying for, will it raise the whole? Or is it just something that I'm praying for for myself? And what does that mean, for myself? It means for a separate self. In other words, you can start looking at your desires and you can, you can say, well, is this desire that I have, does this spring from one of these uh, separate selves, these subconscious selves? Because if it does, then it's, it's one of those desires that uh, I've talked about uh, before with desires, that some desires can't be filled. They're like a black hole. You know, so you can see, um, if you take an extreme example, you can see billionaires. They have more money than they could possibly spend for the rest of their lives but they can't stop themselves from trying to make more because it's never enough. And that is one of these unfulfillable desires. So if you have that, then this comes from a, a subconscious self. And then you need to look at that, discover what the illusion is behind yourself and let it go so that you are praying for something that is a, a fillable desire uh, and one that raises the whole instead of just gives you an advantage that uh, by taking advantage of other people. And... Uh, so, so there are a lot of considerations there that you can apply when your prayers aren't fulfilled if you're really willing to get to a point where you know how to pray. And, and as I said, I, don't, uh, I, I wouldn't even consider praying for something physical. But it doesn't mean that, that I don't have a, a physical situation that is actually what I've always dreamt about. Uh, it's just that this has become manifest because instead of praying for it, I am 
seeing it in my higher mind, my identity, mental mind, and I'm accepting it at the emotional level. I'm accepting even at the identity level, I'm worthy to have a comfortable physical situation that allows me to focus on doing my spiritual work. And this, this has been manifest over time. But it's not, I wouldn't say it's manifested by prayer. It's manifested by visualization, manifestation, by accepting it. And um, it, it's been manifested by having this shift. You know, do I live in a hostile universe or a friendly universe? And a number of years ago, I shifted into, I'm living in a friendly universe. Like Jesus said 2,000 years ago, Fear not, little flock, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, you can always debate whether a nice house is the kingdom of God, but so there are different levels. But nevertheless, we are meant to be co-creators. And we are, that universe is set up to help us manifest even physical conditions that are, allow us to do our, what we're here for spiritually. And so, um, so I would say that, you know, what I've gone through is this shift of coming to be able better to, at visualizing, at accepting, and therefore bringing it down from the identity to the mental, to the emotional, into the physical. So it's, it's you know, and, and there's actually a, a, point, a part of the question here that I thought was a good observation that um, other people say that after clearly visualizing the desired situation in detail, you must forget it and stop paying attention. And there, there's value in that. I mean, I would, I would say that I don't, even, I don't even visualize the situation in detail. It's not like I'm going out and saying, this is exactly what I want. I just have some idea in my mind of what I need in order to do my work. And then I'm actually leaving a lot of leeway for life to manifest it in whatever way it can practically be, be manifest. And uh, a lot of the times what manifests is better than I had visualized. I see a lot of people, and I remember, especially when I was younger, there are many, many people that went to this treasure mapping where you had to have this exact picture of the house you wanted or the car you wanted. And quite frankly, um, I want a house that's affordable, that's comfortable for li uh, to live in, that has enough space. I want a car that's dependable and I can drive. You know, whether it's uh, blue or yellow or polka dots dotted, I, that doesn't matter to me. So you see, instead of being very, very specific, I have this much more general view of what I need because I'm focused on doing my work and I just need what supports that. And then, um, I, but when I, have, when I have clarified in my mind that there's something I need, I do let it go. Oh, I just sort of send it up to my higher self, to the Ascended Masters, and I just let them manifest it at the time they want to manifest it and in the way that it can practically be manifest. And um, that has worked for me. I mean, it's, you can always debate. Maybe I could have had much more if I had asked for it. You know, you have this old poem, I bargained with life for a penny, only to find out that whatever I had asked of life, God would have willingly paid. But I don't need any more than I have. Um, I don't need a big house. I don't need a fancy car. I don't need, you know, expensive clothes or jewelry. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, anything like that, you know. So, so if I have what I need to do my work and my uh, joy and my service is doing my work, well, why should I be more specific? Now, there are some people that will disagree with that, and that's fine. If you have specific needs, then go for it. I mean, I have talked about in uh, another video um, about desires. You know, uh, it's about whether sex is... Uh, anti-spiritual, where I talk about desires, fulfillable and unfulfillable desires, but I also talk about there are some that are legitimate desires because we have, uh, like I even used the example of Yogananda, who had a desire for a palace, and his guru manifested a palace, not physically, but in the etheric realm. 
so he could have the experience of having had the palace and get over the desire. So if you have a very specific desire, then by all means, try to make it specific. It's just that for me, it's like, I don't really have any specific desires left uh, for anything physical. I need, you know, roof over my head and this and that, but uh, uh, I don't need a big fancy house, for example. So, um, so what else can be said? Was there anything I missed here? So I would say, again, I understand that if you are in a state of frustration, you are suffering because there's something you don't have, uh, this might seem very abstract. You know, shifting your consciousness might seem very impractical and not what you really need. But the thing is, what do you really need? Is it a short-term fulfillment of a specific desire, or is it a long-term fulfillment of the higher desires you put in your divine plan, in your life plan? I, I see many, many times, and I can recognize for myself when I was younger, you know, I had certain desires that were not in alignment with my life plan. And so I was putting a lot of energy and effort into manifesting this and um, it just took so much effort, and I never really got anywhere with it. Whereas I can see that there are other desires in my life that have been in alignment with a life plan, and they have manifested fairly easily. So I have over the years developed this, um, and this is another consideration you can apply. You know, if if it requires too much effort, then perhaps it's not in alignment with your life plan to manifest it. Because you are, in a sense, you, you are sabotaging yourself. You, you, have, you have a surface desire, but you have a deeper desire not to have that surface desire manifest because it would detract you from your divine plan. And I know this gets tricky because you can always say there is a certain opposition from the density of the universe, the density of the collective consciousness. So you, sometimes you have to break through in order to manifest a goal. So it, there can also be that consideration. But in my opinion, in my experience, it's more often than not, it's that we are subconsciously working against a superficial desire's fulfillment because we know this is not really in our life plan. It's just a detraction, distraction. And so, um, is it really necessary to have that big fancy house, for example, or whatever it may be? Is it worth it, the amount of effort you would have to put into it? Is it uh, necessary to have a certain career goal fulfilled if it requires that you spend all of your time and energy and effort on it for many years before you achieve it? Um, just some random examples of how people can... I just see that people are often so very, very focused on a specific physical need must be fulfilled. And as spiritual people, you know, are there really any specific physical needs, material needs that must be fulfilled? As I said, perhaps there are. Perhaps you have a legitimate desire to experience something or to have something. And then by all means go for it. But then I think it will not require the kind of frantic, obsessive compulsive effort. Uh, and so I, I think if I was to say one word that would help you not only pray but fulfill your desires, it would be surrender. You know, and, and this is also in a way what's implied with this, that you visualize what you need and then you let it go. It's like you surrender it. You're saying, I desire to have this. I accept that I'm worthy of it. I am grateful for it, but I surrender to the universe. The universe, I accept that the universe will manifest what I really need according to a higher vision than I have right now. And so I think that's an important consideration also that, and, and um, but there's certainly validity, you know, there, there's validity into shifting your mind into a state where you are grateful for the circumstances in your life. Even if there's a specific need that isn't fulfilled. 
you are still grateful. And you are accepting that you are living in a friendly universe that will manifest what you need according to the higher vision that was put into your life plan, that you put in there yourself before you came into embodiment. And there are many people who will say that uh, oftentimes when they don't get exactly what they want or when they get something different, it turns out to be a blessing in disguise, and I've certainly experienced that myself. Um, so I think you can learn to recognize fairly quickly when you have this obsessive compulsive desire in the outer mind, and this comes from a subconscious self. And then when you have some deeper desire where it's, it's almost not even a desire, it's just a sense of, oh yeah, this is what I need to manifest. And then you are grateful, you, are, you know that it can be manifest, no obsession, uh, obsession about it, and you just, once you see it, you let it go, and then you just allow the universe to take the time it takes to manifest. But you also do what you need to do in, in practicality to manifest it. I mean, you, you know, you can't just, you can't just sit there passively and wait for the orange to drop in your turban. Uh, if there's practical measures that need to be taken, you know, it's it's the old story. I can I guess I can end with this silly story. You know that uh, the story is that Abraham needed money, and Abraham was in good standing with God, so he was used to getting whatever he wanted. So Abraham decides uh, he needs some money, and so he's going to pray to God to win the lottery. Because the practical way to uh, get the money he thinks is to win the lottery. So he prays really hard, and then you know Sunday comes along, he doesn't win the lottery. Next week he prays even harder. He still doesn't win the lottery. Finally, he prays really, really hard to God, says, God, I need this money. You have to let me win the lottery. And then he hears a booming voice from heaven saying, Abraham, buy a ticket. And of course, he had prayed, but he hadn't bought a lottery ticket. So you can't win the lottery ticket if you don't buy a ticket. And you can't get that job if you don't send in an application or whatever is required. So I hope this helps. Um, I pray that it helps. <laughs>